Hello everyone, welcome to Game Brigade. My name is Brian and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be talking about how to keep a board game collection lean and reasonable so we have time to play all the games in our collection. If that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned for that. Thank you to Into the Am for sponsoring my video. If you go to their website right now, you can check out some cool graphic tees. I'm wearing one right now, as you can see. And you can check out these tees and get a bundle for $15 off. And use my coupon code BOARDGAME for an additional 10% off site-wide. Okay, guys. Well, I thought it'd be fun to kind of talk about keeping a board game collection lean and uh, in shape and manageable because in the reality of this we are trying to play our games now I did think about that that statement there and the statement of am I a collector am I a gamer am I a hybrid of both uh, because I do see myself as a collector in a sense when it comes to board gaming uh, I have games specifically in my collection that I've never played I've talked about this before never played but i have no intentions ever selling them because they are part of my collection they're games i actively seeked out i wanted them to be in my collection i have intentions at some point to play them but they're still mainstays but for the most part that is a rarity of my collection for the most part my collection is intended to be used and played and and to be enjoyed so i wanted to share with you some of the reasons or tips and things that i do to keep my collection manageable now i will say uh, as a caveat to asterisk here um i don't follow all of these and, and it's mostly well not that i don't follow them i am actively working towards following them because my collection has ballooned greatly within the last three to four months as kickstarters have started to fall in place all the games from 2020 and 2021 and sometimes even 2022 have started to all deliver at the same time and you start thinking to yourself i don't have room nor the time to enjoy all these games because in the meantime while i was backing those games in the meantime, I was purchasing retail games, picking up games at, uh, at yard sales or online, whatever, adding to my collection, filling things in, and then all of a sudden here comes a massive drop. So I wanted to talk about some of the things that I do and talk about what it is. So one of the things we talk about quite a bit on this, especially within the last three weeks, we've talked about when we're backing games, when we're buying games, is understand that good isn't good enough. I don't know where I heard that term for the first time, but I love the concept of it because there are so many games that we have the opportunity to play. Why would we want to waste our time playing a game that's just good? We want to enjoy great games, games that are going to fill our hearts, who are going to give us the enjoyment and the pleasure and want us to come back again. There are games in my collection right now that I have played once and I don't know if I want to go back to them again. Those are games that are on my call list. They're on the way out. Things that I need to shift and make room for to get them out so I can bring new games in to play and see if they deserve a spot in my collection. So that's something to address is look at your collection, find the games that bring you happiness, bring your joy, do some Maria Kondo stuff, find out what can we cut and let's get them out. Another point that I've talked about quite a bit on this channel, and I think it very much is important in this discussion is understanding your player group. I used to talk about not buying games for other people, and you could add that as a caveat or as an addendum to this conversation. But I like to say, look at your player group as a whole. Who comes, who, who's part of it, who are the active numbers, and what games do you generally play? Are they Euros? Are they uh, combative games? Are they strategy games? Find out what they are. Look at your collection and see, are we going to be playing these games? If you have a game, a, a, a group that enjoys Euros and one shots, is a game like uh, Oathsworn going to be for you? A game that's going to be much more heavily com com uh, combative and uh, dealing with a campaign narrative? Now, they might be. I don't know. Again, this is something you have to analyze. But looking at your player group and figuring out what is most likely going to get played, what are my groups going to enjoy? Also, do you play solo? I have bought solo games in the past, 
but I know that I'm not a solo gamer. When I have the opportunity to play a solo game and I have the opportunity to do other things like video games or watching movies, I tend to go to other mediums. I play board games for the social aspect. So understanding that and buying games like Final Girl, which I do have in my collection, aren't really the best for me because I don't play them as much as I should, even though I do enjoy them when I do play them. It's an interesting, it's an interesting take. The next thing that I, I have found, and I believe that this is extremely interesting, is that selling can be therapeutic in a way uh, as you uh, alleviate weight from your chest or from your shoulders because a lot of times these games can become burdens on yourself. Uh, as you look at your collection and you see your shelves filling up with space, sometimes you might even have board games on the floor. I have told myself I never wanted to be a, a content creator that has a stack of board games in the corner uh, because I have too much stuff. Uh, because I overbuy or whatever it may be. And now I am becoming that person. I've got unboxed, unopened games in the uh, entranceway. Zombicide, uh, Undead or Alive just showed up. It's, it's becoming a situation where I need to make sure I'm continually cultivating, continually moving through. And I found that when I started selling these games, when I started releasing games that I was maybe tentative about letting go, uh, I wasn't sure, but I eventually did sell them. It became therapeutic in a way because I finally let go of that burden and allowed me to open up space to put more things on my shelves. I have very much enjoyed doing that. I would look at different ways. If you haven't sold a game before, or if you're unsure about letting games go in your collection, sometimes the easiest thing to do is just start. Find a way first to go through your collection and pull games off the shelves. Pull things off that you might not find that you want them in your collection. You don't have to sell them right away, but maybe just take them, put them in a pile, and put them somewhere else. Put them in a place that's not part of your collection. And if you enjoy the way that has made your collection feel, the way looking at your wall has become, maybe now it's time to release those games and to sell them. And a lot of times you can take these older games sell them and convert them into something new that will generate you happiness or find a way to bring something part of your collection that'll be more useful to you and allow all, someone else to take those games and to enjoy them themselves. So that's going to be the quick rough uh, conversation in terms of how I have been working towards keeping my collection lean and clean, uh, something I'm continually striving for. No way in a sense that I am there yet. I still have plenty of games I need to sell. I personally have just done the strategy of pulling games out. I have them in the dining room for now, uh, getting that feel for it. And I am comfortable letting them go. If I don't really see a need for them in my collection, I will be selling those games next. So that's Brian. This is, that's it. I'm Brian from Game Brigade. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a comment down below. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Join the community. If you're part of the Wealth Pack, oh, I should not have done that. Oh my gosh, I'm such a nerd. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.